Hello, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Let me introduce myself to you. Uh, my name is Muhammad, and I am the mercy for humanity. And today I'm going to show you some of my mercy. Are you ready? Uh, one of you sent me this post from uh, Twitter. And this is a, a post made by Press TV, which is the official government uh, TV of Iran, the Islamic Republic of Iran. And you know, the Islamic Republic of Iran is very well known about how merciful it is for humanity. As an example, in Iran, uh, they don't just hang you, they hang you in the electric column, which means you get electricity for free. I mean, look who is talking about humanity and about mercy. As long as you are following the most merciful person for mankind and you practice Islam and your government is an Islamic state like ISIS. So why, how, where is the mercy we see in Iran? It is amazing the level of a scam and a fraud those people live with. And they posted a, a little video here showing with Muhammad is an amazing person. Muhammad, he freed the slaves, my friend. Muhammad, he freed the slaves. Okay, how many slaves Muhammad, he die, when he died, he half? When Muhammad, he died, how many slaves he own? Which means he died, and yet he still own slaves. Is it one of the title of Muhammad that he is a ba'i'ul abid, slave seller? Muhammad he fight oppression Muhammad he fight oppression he is the most op you know when the Muslim they say to you that the Arab were oppressing Islam or Muslims I laugh because the Muslim themselves they say that there was a 360 gods around the Kaaba 360 gods and Arab are not killing each other so what is the oppression? You see the fabrication? How you say to us that the Arab, they have 360 gods around the Kaaba, 360 idols, each one of them present a god and different religion, and yet nobody killing anyone. So why the Muslims were oppressed? And if Muhammad was oppressed, so how come he is oppressing others? Shouldn't he fight oppression? Here in front of us, they see that Muhammad was born in the same year or where the elephant army. I mean, this is one of the legions, the Muslims and Muhammad and the Abdul, they accept that there is an army of elephant come to attack Mecca. You know what? I like this story about the elephant army. I'm not going to talk about it much, but <clears throat> as long as you are talking about elephants and elephants are my hobby, we used to grow them in the backyard, you know, because we are Arab, we say a lot of things nobody can believe. You don't believe me? We don't grow chicken. We grow elephant in the backyard. Elephant going to Mecca? I mean, are you serious? Elephants, they were attacking Mecca? You know, when I was in school in the Middle East, since I was a kid, I was a troublemaker. The teacher don't even accept me to say anything. I put my hands up. He says, not you. I went to high school, not you. I went to Islamic University, not you. Nobody, not, not, don't ask me. I have no answer for you. Now, the simple question. The Muslims who believe in such a stupid story that there's an elephant army attacking Mecca. I mean, okay, who is going to give them Pepsi Cola in their way? Do you know how much water elephant they need? This is a desert. An elephant, not only he need a lot, he, he needs 600 gallon of water a day. This is just a drink. Not to mention how much water he need to spray over himself, otherwise he will die from the heat. An elephant army coming to Mecca? Are you sure? Are you sure they are not the Jewish tanks? And Allah, he sent birds, brother. And those birds, they throw rocks at the elephants. And the army die. True story. This is a very true story. You know what is funny? 
that Allah did not send those elephants when Al Qurmuti came and destroyed the Kaaba for real. And not only that, Al Qurmuti he destroyed the Kaaba, killed ten thousand Muslim like him. He's a Muslim, and he was screaming at Allah, saying, "Hey Allah, where is your elephants? <laughs> where is your elephant, you idiot liar?" He was screaming in the middle of the square of the Kaaba, saying, "Where is your elephant? Hello, potato." No elephant show up. So Allah protected the Mecca when there is a 360 idols around it and he sent his bird to protect it. But Allah will not protect the Kaaba when there is only people worshipping Allah. And by the way, the one is protecting Mecca now is the American uh, uh, Awax. Why, you are, why the Saudi are buying trillions of dollars of weapon from USA? Go ask the birds of Allah. And by the way, for those who are asking where this is story, I mean, this is, this is, can be, there is a chapter in the Quran, it's called the chapter of the elephant. Yes, brother. Chapter, the Quran is like a zoo. Spider, elephant, ants, you name it. Hmm? So, according to the Quran, which is, must be true story. Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka aw rabbika bi ashab al-feel? Okay, what the fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al-feel ya 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 abdil? Alam tara? Haven't you seen what Allah he did with the owner of the elephant? No, we did not see. Anyone saw? Who saw? And he sent against them swarms of a flying creatures. Flying creatures, and here it says in Arabic. Here it says, "Tayran ababil." What the flying creatures? Tayran is a bird. And you see the second you say it's a tire, it's a bird, a flying creature. What does that mean? I mean, this is a, like alien. And then they throw at them stones, backed clay. Those birds, they back the clay as weapon. Look, they have a manufacturer for back clay. Those chickens, they have a special, it's an army. It's an army. There's a department of back the clay. Like there's, there's a, like in, in USA, there's a, a manufacturer make missiles and there is the flying jet. So those birds, they did not only throw rocks, it's backed clay. Hey. Did you finish the back clay? How many we have? We have right now 10,000 back clay. Yes, sir. Okay, give it to me. We are going to attack the elephant and get ready for making more because we might need more. Like, what is that? And if we ask Zach and Naik, is this a story? Is it true? He will say to you, sister, Christian Prince, he always make a question and it's funny and stupid because he's stupid. This is the story is proven. And as an example, if you go in the airplane, what do you think? They have rocks. They call it a rocket. Actually, the word rock, the word rocket, it's coming from the word rock. And it's from the Quran. Uh, what? Uh, hmm? And to make it for you more clear, our friend, the Qaeda, they cook and they back the tea in tea and they make a bomb from it. So it's backed. Hmm. Anyway, anyway, it's a true story. I mean, who can discuss this story? Can you? Al Kaaba was destroyed many times, but the most funny one is Al Qurmuti when he took it and he took the black stone and he made it a purple stone for more than 21 years. And then, in order the Muslim to get the black stone back, they have to bribe him. They send a letter to Al Hakim bi Amullah al Fatimi, the caliphate of Egypt, who was a Shia and he believed that he is God on earth. And they ask him, can you please ask him how much he will charge us to get it back? Because nobody go to the Kaaba no more. The Kaaba died at that time. There's no Kaaba. That's it. People, they saw that this is a false religion. Here we go. The guy, he came, he destroyed the Kaaba. He took the black stone and there was no birds appear. And if there is any Muslim, he don't believe me. Go right now and search about al qurmati destroying the Kaaba and taking the black stone and screaming, hey, Allah, where is your birds? This is not my stories. Actually, there's many videos made by Islamic sheikhs in YouTube about it, and I made a video about it. We go back to our topic. 
Muhammad, the mercy for mankind. You know, when we look at this video here, yeah, you see here the story, like, was defeated by God. Hmm. Right. Hmm. This is Muhammad, supposedly. He is not an ordinary one. I have to agree, Muhammad is not an ordinary. You know, he pissed like a woman. He imagined himself doing things, but in fact, he did not. Even his sex was not real. And the Muslims, they say to us, that the Prophet, he was bewitched. Hmm. I think I'm bewitched too. Sometime I think I have four wives, but then I go to the bedroom, I found nobody. Hmm. But Muhammad, he is more bewitched, actually. I can have to admit, because Muhammad, he even, he think he is having sex, but in fact, he was not. I mean, do you see how much this guy bewitched? And this is the man who is protected by Allah. He's very special. We have to agree. Look at this. The Prophet continued, continued. What do you mean continues? For how long is doing this? What do you mean continued? Continued for such and such a period of time, imagining that he had boom, boom. But in fact, he did not have boom, boom. He was have boom, boom. What is that? Have you ever heard of a prophet like this? Prophet Muhammad, why you are breathing heavily? I was having boom, boom. A prophet? What boom, boom? You were holding the pillow. Uh huh. You were holding the pillow. Uh, what what pillow? I, I saw you. What boom boom? So what do you mean the prophet was imagining himself? What he was doing exactly? Can somebody explain? What is this? I saw just a pillow on my couch. I'm afraid to touch it anymore. Oh boy. Muhammad was holding it. In fact, he did not. Like what? So he was doing what exactly? Can you explain for us, please? And how we can trust this man that he saw an angel, an angel squeezed him, the angel told him if this guy, he, he even his sex have no witnesses. Have you ever heard of sex has no witnesses, which means there's no women there? Hmm? Now we go back. I mean, why are you guys taking me away from my topic? Let us blame the Jews. You see, we are talking about the mercy of the Prophet, and now we are talking about Muhammad Boom Boom. We have to blame somebody. Let us blame the Jews. Okay, Muhammad, the mercy of mankind, always he have to find an excuse for his failure. And this one about himself, imagining himself, he blamed the Jews. Here we go. He said that the one who placed a magic on him is, is a guy, his name is Lubaid ibn al -Asam. Who is this guy, Lubaid ibn al -Asam? He's a Jew, brother. Unbelievable. I mean, I'm surprised his name is not Jack Shalom. The Jew? The Jew, they were controlling the Prophet of Allah by remote control, by taking some hair from his... Uh, <coughs> I mean, why you don't do that now? Control some hair from the... <coughs> of Trump. Why you Muslim don't uh, do magic? And, and by the way, anyone knows who is the one who first teacher for who opened what they call the guy? Harry Pot Harry Potter? I'm not good in English, you know me. English is not is my is my twenty language after the I speak only one language actually. But uh, still English is my twentieth uh, language because Arabic language is like disaster. It's like learning twenty languages in the same time. 
The first one who opened a school to teach the Jews how to do magic was who? Was Allah. Allah, brother, he sent two angels. One, his name is Harut, and the other one, his name is Marut. I mean, look at the names. Look at the names, Harut and Marut. Now I know why the Russian, they say, hooray, hooray, they are doing magic. Like what? Allah, he sent two angels down in the tower of the Babylon. This is the elevator of Allah. Mm, Babylon, tower, uh -huh, magic, uh, two angels. I mean, look, Allah, he did not send one angel. Yeah, because one, he need to teach females and the other one open uh, the, a class for male. We don't mix in Islam, brother. We have two separated the class, brother. One for male and one for female. Haram. It's haram. So Harut and Marut, they open a school. And before you join the school, you have to sign a disclaimer. What? Yes, brother. You have to sign a disclaimer. It says that this school is open to teach you magic to make division between wife and husband. Any one of you is divorced? How many of you is divorced? Be honest. I see one there. Here we go. I'm a prophet Muhammad. I can see it. There's one of you is divorced. Do you know why you get divorced? Because of Harut and Marut. Allah, he sent an angel and he put magic between you and your wife. So since he placed the magic, you like rice with the spice. She don't like rice with the spice. And here we go. You fight about it. Why you put rice with the spice? And you say, I like spice with the rice. And she say, I cannot marry a man who have a spice with the rice. And he say, I cannot be with the women who don't like rice with the spice. And then you get divorced. Magic. It's a magical. God, he sent two angels to teach them. And look, 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 look. Mm. They say to you, we are only a temptation. Allah sending angels to do temptation. So what the devil do for a living? Huh? So what, what exactly the devil is doing? He is in the Maldives Islands having uh, like uh, taking selfie. Allah sending angels to deceive us and to destroy family. How nice of you all. Thank you, Allah. I really appreciate you. And that's why I'm single. Because I don't want to get married and then Allah, he sent me Harut or Marut and place some magic over my wife. Hmm. And then before they teach you magic, they say to you, disclaimer, disclaimer, we are here, just a temptation. And if you do practice this, you should know that we have we are not responsible like what huh anyway why we are talking about this Man. okay i think let us blame the jews because of the jews we change the topic Look what Muhammad he said, because Muhammad is a merciful man for mankind. <clears throat> I mean, this guy, he teach mercy. He's all about mercy. A brother and sister, the prophet said that the hour will not come until the Muslims will fight against the Jews and they will slaughter them all. And if a Jew, he hide himself behind a store or a stone or a tree, the stone will talk. Will stone will say, Hey Abdul, Abdul, look, there's a Jew behind me, kill him. And the tree will shake and will break and will talk like the one in the cartoon. Muhammad, there is a Jew behind me, kill him. Like that's that's the prophet of mercy. What are you talking about? What's wrong with you? Why people cannot see the mercy? The, the mercy is a dripping there. I mean, this guy is not only teaching mercy, is teaching genocide and teaching that it's a must to kill all the Jews. Mm. I see. 
and not to forget the prophet of mercy <sighs> he slaughtered more than 900 Jews after the stupid ones those stupid Jews they give up their weapon they trusted the man he told them give up you will be safe I will not you know I will be just with you and what he did he slaughtered them all the book of jihad <clears throat> No woman of Bani Quraida was killed except one. Muhammad killed only one woman because the rest he took them as a sex slave and the old one for cooking and servants. He raped them all. No woman of Bani Quraida was killed except one. Why he killed her? The merciful prophet, why he killed her? She was with me. And the one is talking is Aisha. Talking and laughing on her back and Billy extremely while the messenger of Allah was killing her people with the sword. I mean, do you see the merciful prophet? The woman, she went crazy. She see her family with their head is being cut off one by one. The prophet is busy writing a book. Cutting the head of the holy tribe one by one. And you are telling me the prophet is not a merciful prophet. What's wrong with you? And yeah, they say to you, uh, ISIS is not Islamic. I, you know, name for me one thing ISIS did is not Islamic. You coward liar, hypocrite, politically correct, which means you are not correct at all. And this woman, because she is laughing, because she lost her mind, this poor woman, seeing her family being killed one by one, look what happened. Suddenly, suddenly a man, which is a Muslim man, called her, Called her name. They know them. They live with them. Where is so and so? She said, "I." I asked, "What is matter with you?" She said, "I knew. I, I didn't knew. Actually, lost her mind." She said, "The man took her and beheaded her." Do you see it? Do you see the mercy religion? And they say to you oppression and Islam fight oppression and Muhammad he fight oppressors and Muhammad is a prophet of justice he was slaughtering people like a chicken and not only that Muhammad he ordered all the male to take off their clothes naked and the one who have even if he is little here if let us say he is 10 years old he will be killed do you see what he did read it one day etc 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 this is a guy this is a Jewish guy who was not killed he'd been taken as a slave I was a young boy and they were not sure about me but they did not find a pupic here so they let me live do you see it so he was killing boys all the male who have little hair around his private part they slaughter him but muhammad obviously is a man of mercy as we see here in the, the twitter I mean, what are you talking about? Yeah, there is no way those people are lying. He fight. Look here, they have a black person. They were uh, beating him. Muhammad was beating the white and the black. Muhammad, he received gifts as a human. He opened box from Amazon. He found women and men inside, and he raped the women. And by the way, they say to you, do you know that the first one, who called for a van was a black person because he was a slave my friend they order him Muhammad he order this guy poor Bilal to go and pray hmm. let us see the hadith it's not an honor but because the white men they will not do it where is the hadith?
Right, let's see. They make it like as an honor. Uh, no, because he is the only poor slave, and you know he is a slave of Muhammad, and he ordered him to do that. He did not uh, give him an honor. Let us see. I'll try to find the hadith for you because I don't like to say things uh, without giving a reference. Um, all right. Well, I have all the hadith in front of me in Arabic, actually, but uh, I need to find the one which you can read in your, you know, in English. Uh, <coughs> where is, where is, where is? Where is the hadith? How Bilal became a person who do the adhan? Here we go. Bilal was commanded to say the adhan. Commanded. Do you know that Muhammad, he never did the adhan? Anyone who, who, who many know of you know? I think none of you know that. Muhammad, he never did call Allahu Akbar, like never, not even once. And I changed any Muslim to say it's not true. Never. How many times Abu Bakr, he called for the Adan? How many times Omar, he called for? They don't call for that. This is the slave job. And Bilal, the poor Bilal, Muhammad died and yet he did not free him. Is that true? Absolutely. This is why he came to original owner, which is Abu Bakr. And he said to him, if you bought me for the sake of Allah, well, let me go for the sake of Allah. If you bought me for yourself, well, keep me for yourself. Enough hypocrisy. Do you see it? Muslims are buying people. And selling people and this is the guy who converted to Islam yet still he's a slave they will not let him go isn't it amazing how merciful the Prophet is oh I forgot you know when the Prophet he cut a woman to pieces Ummu Qirfa and he tied her legs between two camels and he made the camels split her while she is alive. I mean, this is a very merciful act. Think about it. The woman, she was trying to extend her, uh, her legs, the length of her legs. She's over 80 years old. Ill over 80 years old. Isis are nicer. What ISIS? ISIS is a million, billion times nicer than Muhammad. I did not see any video of ISIS splitting a woman two pieces alive. I saw them splitting a man two pieces alive. They tie him between two tanks, following the order of the Prophet. But it was not a woman at the age of 80. That is the merciful prophet. And the merciful prophet, he taught his followers, if you kill somebody, enjoy, what they call it uh, in the movies, like in the terror movie, when somebody start 
cutting hands and fingers torture but this is more than torture you believe it cut their fingertips cut their necks okay you know what I, I, I got it you want to cut their necks right okay why you want to cut their fingertips Muhammad is not a terrorist no and look at the translation here I will throw fear in the heart of the disbeliever it doesn't say fear it says a rob coward liar false translation fear is that beer or fear what fear it says terror I mean obviously he's a merciful look I mean what do you think about cutting your fingertips that's very nice very very nice and you can light some candles watch uh, the prophet cutting the fingertips of his enemies one by one hey you come here put your finger here my name is Tony from the Mafia of Italy Deek, I cut your finger next do you see how nice the prophet not only cutting necks not only he will install terror oh I forgot the prophet he is very nice he said I was victorious by terror from a distance of one month what a distance of what one month one month journey which mean people they piss in their pant if they heard that Muhammad is one month journey of them women and children they piss in their pant when they hear that Muhammad is coming from a month distance this is what it says because he's very 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 peaceful and merciful man and the funny this is what Muhammad saying not me and the Muslim they were saying this is not the true the Prophet was the, the, the Prophet saying that I mean are you blind Oh, I forgot you are a Muslim for sure you you play blind if you are a Muslim you play blind you play deaf you play mute you play all games and you play taqiyya it's your prophet saying that and the whole idea is taking the spoil money money my friend dollar the green dollar at that time gold and silver do you see it if there is any hadith narrated by Bilal I mean this guy is a they might mention that uh, he said something but it's not really narrated as narrated no I don't remember any But they can mention in the story that Muhammad uh, Bilal said something as here like you know the, the one we showed you Bilal saying uh, You know if you bought me for the sake of uh, yourself keep me for the sake of yourself if you bought me for the sake of Allah free me all right and You know Muhammad is not a fascist person too Muhammad is anti-fascism This is why he taught his people that you have a duty you are the best of mankind chapter 3 verse 110 you see when you go and read the Quran it says وَكُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ okay what is that the, the, the they are the first they are the best of mankind let us go to the Quran Chapter 3, verse 110. You know, when you read this verse here, you think those people are good people. I mean, this religion. Look at this. You are the best community that has been raised up for mankind. What do you want more? To do what? You enjoin right and conduct what is forbidden. Okay, but how they do that? What does that mean exactly? The Muslims will quote that for you, and it says we are not bad. Look at this. 
And here I'm talking about the Muslims who practice Islam. I'm not talking about all Muslims. I'm talking about those who believe in this in the front of us, literally. Hmm. What does that mean? This is what it's meant. They are the best of mankind. Is those who bring them and the chains around their necks. Who bring who? Mankind. You see the duty of the Muslim? The duty, so why people get upset when they saw ISIS putting a human being in a chain and taking them into slavery? This is the order of the Prophet. The mercy, the pro, this is the merciful God. This is the teaching of the merciful God. And this is Sahih al Bukhari. So, my friend. When you hear someone like Christian Prince lying to you, saying to you, Muhammad is not a merciful, don't believe him. Muhammad is the man of mercy. What are you talking about? When he killed the tribe of Bani al-Mustaliq and he raped all their women, and one of them actually, they made her walk over the dead of her husband, the, 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 the dead body of her husband and her father and her brother. And he raped her even before he passed a mile away from her tribe tent he put a tent and he raped her there she did not even it's not even an hour or two after he killed her family and you are telling me muhammad is not a merciful man what's wrong with you and if you see the comment uh underneath of this video in Twitter except my comment for sure you know my comment is here this is my comment this is my comment okay uh, this is my comment so don't get confused because you might think this is a Muslim guy saying Muhammad is a fascist this is my comment look at this guy Mahdi Parisi this is a, obviously he's an Iranian Persian a government continue with atheism, but not with justice. Hmm. Anyone who hears call of an oppressed, this is Muhammad talking, supposedly, person, and he does not help him or her is not a Muslim. When you hear this, you say, Muhammad says that? Oh. If you don't help an oppressed, what does that mean? Muhammad, he ordered the Muslims to help the Muslims and to kill whoever is against them. Anyone who don't like Islam, he is an enemy. Let us see this with the proofs and reference. What oppress? Muhammad is the oppressor. Muhammad, he made it clear, I will kill all mankind. Not even one of them will stay alive. Read it. All of this is authentic stories. I've been commanded to kill. You see, it says should fight. Fight in Arabic is uqatil. It's not really fight. Uqatil. I should fight to kill. The word qatala means kill. Uqatil to kill. Not to fight, really. So I've been commanded to fight to kill against the people, all people, all mankind. Is that because those people are oppressing the Muslims? No, read it carefully. Until they say that there's no prophet but me and there's no God but Allah and they pray as we pray and they pay zakat and we slaughter as we slaughter and they eat as we eat and they face the Kaaba. And then and only then I will stop slaughtering them. Do you see it? All of those reported by Muslims, not by me. That Muhammad he said that Muhammad he have a duty to kill every human being and you have to say that he's a prophet and Allah is his God and you have to pay him money so you can live and not only that if you don't pray as he taught you to pray if you don't eat as he taught you to eat which means you slaughter the way Islamic way he will kill you still even if you say I believe in Muhammad it's in the front of you But remember, Islam is against oppression. So if you don't slaughter as they slaughter, they will kill you. Do you slaughter chicken? Do you eat a chicken? Okay. Is it halal? 
Brother, no, it's not halal. Kill him. You see the mercy for religion? Nobody tried to stop him, my friend. He he he's a coward man. He he beheaded them when there's no enemy left. That's it. He, he have a big number of fighters. And the rest are weak. That's it. He captured them. What? Who stop him? Who can stop him? Who's going to stop him? Well, what are you talking about? Like who? Who is going to stop ISIS from slaughtering people when they are, they have the upper hand? What are you talking about? So Muhammad making it clear that this is the duty of a Muslim is to fight. He being commanded. If Muhammad is commanded, that means every Muslim is commanded too. Do you see it? He is commanded to fight those who who don't testify that Allah is God and He is a prophet, not those who oppress Islam as He say, as they, they lie to us and they say that. This is the constitution of the cult of Islam. And this is the source of terrorism. It's not really ISIS. ISIS is just a victim of this teaching. All those who join ISIS, they are victims actually, even though they are criminals. But those criminals, they thought they are doing something good because of this man. So what the world does, blame ISIS, but nobody blame Muhammad. Did you ask yourself when ISIS, they slaughter somebody, they are reciting what in Arabic? They are reciting this. Muhammad just to make the Muslims who've joined ISIS or group like ISIS because he is the founder of ISIS feel good when they kill and they slaughter he he told them it's not you who killed them it's Allah what does that mean he did not shoot you did not kill it's Allah who killed them read it Chapter 8, verse number 17. Ye Muslims, slew them not, but Allah slew them. Do you see it? To make them feel comfortable with their crime. It's not you who killed them. Yes, it's by your hand. Yes. Yes, it's you who chop his head. Yes, it's you who chop his fingertips and cut his hand and his legs. But it's Allah. Do you see it? But Muhammad is the most merciful for mankind. For sure he is. All right? A Muslim saying to me, your understanding for the hadith. Hey, you know what? Let me show you. Okay, shall I show you the understanding of the hadith by Islamic scholars saying you should kill the Christians and the Jews? Okay, Mr. Justice, I am willing to open my sky for you and I will make you read your Islamic scholar reading what you claim my misunderstand. I like it when a Muslim say misunderstanding. Let me open your Islamic scholar's understanding. And then in a second, you will become like a rabbit. And you will say, I don't accept the Muslim scholars. And so you don't accept the Christian prince. You don't accept the scholars. You accept who? Uh, <clears throat> I accept no one. I'm an independent Muslims. I am uh, made in uh, China. Potato. Those are your scholars explaining the Quran and the Hadith. And this guy, his name is Ibn Kathir. I guess you will not accuse him that he is a Jew or working for the Jews. What Ibn Kathir he says about killing Christians, Jews, anyone who don't believe in Allah. He said in the Quran, وَإِنَّمَا الْمُشْرِكُونَ نَجِسِ What does that mean? Fascist teaching. Mushrikeen are filthy, dirty. Like In the English here, they say impure. What impure? It says najis. Najis, which means you, you have a kind of faith which no water can wash it. You are filthy all the way in your blood. 
so they are not allowed Islam is the first one who established no go soon you see the Muslim they say to you around the Kaaba there's a 360 idols and nobody is bothered or to be racist or fascist say only my religion will be there no 360 gods around the Kaaba and the Arab practicing that peacefully Muhammad is the first one who came with an idea that we are the best and anyone is not a Muslim is a najis is filthy dirty and he is not allowed to get clear or get closer to to Kaaba or the Mecca right now in Saudi Arabia there's signs it says Muslims only you cannot enter Mecca if you are a Christian or a Jew or a Hindu or an atheist they will kill you immediately and they say to you Islam is against racism isn't it racism to say that there's a group of people they are dirty just because they don't follow a group isn't it this is what the KKK is about they want to kill the black people they cannot enter their towns the KKK actually they are following Muhammad step by step not Jesus and look here he explained how dirty they are and then he ordered the Muslims to attack the Christians and the Jews and they have to humiliate them and they have to force them to pay jizya and the Muslim they said you do you know that jizya this is a tax everybody did pay tax let me show you if this is a tax or not you see this guy he is the one who said you don't understand okay let us see if I understand or not Muhammad is teaching that fighting against those who believe in not on Allah or the last days so fighting who those who don't believe in Allah nor the last days from who from the Christians not those who fight you know those just because they don't believe in Allah and they don't believe in what Muhammad came with and his teaching and what he forbid so we kill them or they pay the jizya with willing and submission the Muslim they say well jizya is hmm, tax is it true look how the scholars of Muslims explain the jizya Paying jizya is a sign of kufr and disgrace. Do you see this? Do you see how we get them busted? Until they pay the jizya if they do not choose to embrace Islam. So this is a penalty of disgrace. And look what he says. And feel themselves subdued, disgraced, humiliated, etc. Therefore, Muslims are not allowed to honor the people of Dimma. People of Dimma is the Christian and the Jews. Or elevate them above Muslims. For they are miserable, disgraced, humiliated. Muslim recorded by Abu Huraira, the father of the cats. Don't initiate the prophet. Said, the prophet said, not me. The prophet said, look the purse, look, look the prophet of mercy and peace. Don't initiate salam to the Jews and the Christians. And if you meet any of them in the road, force them to walk in the sewage. In the old day, there is an alley in the side of the road, which is for the dirty water. So when a Muslim he see a Christian during the Islamic occupation for the Christian land, they force them to walk in the sewage. This is why the leader, the faithful Omar al Khattab, look Omar al Khattab, he don't understand Islam too. May Allah pleased with him. He demand his well known conditions be to met by the Christians. He put conditions on them. He attacked Jerusalem. Attack Syria, attack Damascus, attack all those cities. Says, listen, this is my condition. You want to live? This is my condition. To ensure those conditions, to ensure what? To ensure their continued humiliation. Do you see it? And this potato there, he is saying to me, you don't understand. Let your dad call me or your mommy in the best scenario. Great temperance, you don't understand. Nothing Christian Prince he said, it is what in the screen you said. This is your statement, not mine. This is your books, not mine. Right? Yeah. Uh, Prophet David and Moses and Joshua did not charge. Oh, let me tell you about the jizya because Muhammad is a thief. And David, by the way, he condemned by God for a lot of crimes he did. Secondly, you are talking about Moses. Well, I can show you that according to your God, Allah, he ordered Moses to go and attack the Palestinian and kill them all. 
And here you just said something very important. This Muslim, he just said that neither David, neither Musa asked for jizya. That to prove that Muhammad is a scam. He want money. He don't care for God. How come if I pay you money, yet I believe in the long, wrong God, it's okay. <laughs> if you are a person who is fighting for the sake of Allah to establish only one belief in one God, how come if I pay you some pennies, you let me live? That means you are a scam. That means you are a fraud. Your target is the money. And actually, if we read this verse here, it says clearly that if you fear that you are going to be poor, Allah will give you how? Go and attack the Christians and the Jews. Can we prove it from the Quran? Absolutely. Here we go. Read and love. Pay me. I don't care for Allah. If you pay me. This is verse number 29, right? Okay. But look what verse number 28 saying. If you feel poverty, Allah will give you something instead. If you fear poverty from the loose of merchandise, Allah shall preserve you in his bounty. And right away, go and attack the Christians, take their money. Do you see it? Do you see it? It's a fraud. The prophet of the fraud. Post in. Uh, let me show you. Show you some of the Muslims' statement. Uh, Paul says Jesus became a curse to redeem us from the law of, and if Jesus uh, uh, atoned for our sin, why the verse is. Uh, contrary to Roman 14 12 a man should be responsible for his own action you know first of all uh, uh, I will show you from the Quran to answer you about this because if I show you from the Bible right away you will say I don't believe in this anyway the Quran says that every soul shall pay for its own sin do you agree with that Hmm? You will say yes. Correct, guys? You will say yes. We agree with that. The verse you quote from us from the Bible saying that everyone he should pay for his sin, but the Christians they believe. This is why Paul is saying that Jesus he is paying for our sin. Yes, because because of our sin, we will never go to heaven anyway even if we repent because we already commit the crime but Jesus paid for our sin mean that if you accept me I'm giving you one more chance to come with me it's not about paying for sin because he have to but because he loved to save us so he is not paying because this is a contradiction but because he loves us here we have a Quran Saying in chapter 6, verse 164, that no soul shall pay for the sin of other soul. This is the Quran. But look what Muhammad, he said. Muhammad, he said, that Allah, he will put the sin of the Muslims and let me get you the hadith all the sins of the Muslims even if it is in the size of mountains Allah will place it on the Jews and the Christians Do you see it? So how this is contradict that? Secondly, now or in a in a moment, you will you you will you will silence yourself. You will say, "Oh, uh, uh, forget about my question." So in Christianity, 
every human being shall pay for his sin and this is absolutely true this is why it says that Jesus he took the sin from us because we have to pay for it we are the one responsible he is not responsible but because he loved us for God he loved the world he sent his only begotten son now you tell me what's happening here how you just said to me in the Quran that every soul shall pay for its own sin and then Allah will take the sin of the Muslims even if it's in the size of mountains and he will place it on the Christians and the Jews are you there Abdul the one who was posting for me do you have an answer for this are you there or you play dead now are you going to take a nap the one who loves Islam where are you so how the Quran says Allah will uh, you know he no soul shall pay for the sin of other soul is the Jews and the Christians they have soul no according to Islam they are animals see he is not answering he heard nothing he understand nothing And by the way, you are, as long as you're attacking Paul, the one who keep attacking Paul. So why your book saying that Paul is a prophet, you idiot? Is it your prophet? Even the Quran, chapter 36, saying that Paul is one of the mighty messengers of Allah. Just to show you that we don't speak to people who have knowledge of anything. They don't know the religion. They don't know ours. In the front of you, here we go. This is the book of Ibn Kathir. Of Ibn who? Ibn Kathir. This is not Ibn Christian. Huh? And this is your own interpretation, brother. It says that Paul is a mighty messenger of Allah. You don't believe me? Do you know how to read or you are illiterate like your prophet who want to be a teacher in university? And we string them with the third means we supported them. Okay. Who are they, those three? It says here, the names of the first two messengers were Shamoon, which means Simon, Peter, and Yohanna and John. And the name of the third, which means the most powerful between them, is Bulos. This is in Arabic. So you're accusing Paul to be a fraud when your Quran and your scholars saying Paul is the most powerful prophet of Allah. Who cares if you believe me or not? You're an idiot. You are suffering. This is why you are jumping like a monkey. Say, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Get out of here. We spank you as never you get spanked before. This is why you are getting upset. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Take a break. Buta zucchini. Who cares if you believe me or not? You eat it. This is a Mika Theor. And here we go. This is your official, your website for the Dean Show. This is run by the Dean Show TV, brother. The one who owned this website, brother, and this is Ibn Kathir, brother. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Don't believe me. You're a chicken making. Buck, 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 buck. It's okay. I understand. The egg is coming. So we Muslims, we don't believe that somebody should pay for the sin of somebody. And then we find that Muhammad saying that Allah will place the sin. Of all the Muslims, even if it's equal to mountains on the Christians and the Jews. You see the hypocrisy and the stupidity? This is literally nothing but a stupidity. You see it? This is stupidity. Those people, they have no idea what they believe in. They don't know who is their prophet. They don't know who is their... Actually, if we ask them who is Allah, they don't know. You remember just two days ago, we have a Muslim. He starts trying to say to me, Allah may be a man. Uh, I said to him, maybe his uh, his shin is an ant uh, shin. He said, maybe. He doesn't know what they are talking about. They have no idea. Why am I? Why you are saying I'm in a bad mood? I enjoy it. the The most the most joy for me is getting those potatoes spanked for their lies, and that's why I'm here. And you are telling me I'm in a bad mood. Why? Why I'm bad mood? Funny. If this is in a bad mood, so what is good mood? This is the best mood ever. Have you seen one Muslim saying something would it not spank him? He's in a bad mood. 
This is what we are here for. Get in the get online, boom, 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 spanking, and then go make some tea and coffee. That's it, brother. A brother editor, the other person is named the Christian Prince, and he think he can spank me. And I told him you cannot spank me because my butt is so small, and I wear very, very, very big clothes. It's very hard to hit me there. What? 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 I cannot hit you. I cannot spank you because your pants is so big and you are so skinny inside. Did you see the jacket of Zach and Nag? It fit like for Robert Spencer. What his name? Robert Spencer, right? He's, this guy is big, but Zach and Nag, he's he's very skinny and he wear a very wide jacket. Like you feel like he, the jacket is moving around him. If you turn the fan, the jacket will start moving. Where is your scholars who want to call me and debate me? Instead of getting some a bunch of kids who do not know, actually the easiest way to spank Islam is speaking to someone who claimed to be a scholar. Those kids, it's very hard to talk to them because they don't know anything. They can say anything they want. Do you remember the guy who sent me a scholar to debate him? He said, I'm going to call my scholar to talk to, talk to you. Go watch it and die laughing. All right. Do we have any somebody who have a shake a beard? We accept all kind of sizes of shake beard, small, short. Huh? Brother editor. There's a woman. She asks Zach and Nag. Why a Muslim woman? There's no Muslim woman. She is a prophet. Zaik and Naik, Naik, he scratches ass. I mean, his sorry, is his head, and he come with the most intelligent answer. He said, "Brother Sitter, the Sitter, they ask a question. Why in Islam there is no woman? He the prophet. And actually, I have to confirm. And I agree with her. In Islam, we don't have a woman. He the prophet. And the reason for that, it's very logical. Because if a woman to become a prophet, he have to lead the congregation with him. And if he lead the congregation with him, the prayer he have to bend over." And if she bend over, that would disturb the believer. What? If the woman she bend over, the Muslim cannot pray? And this is the reason she is not a prophet, because of her ass? And all the Muslim like, wow, that's a very smart answer, brother. He got it. He got it right. It is the ass of women, my brother. This is why she cannot be a prophet. And like 10,000 people watching and nobody die laughing? You should take this guy and put him in the museum. A woman, she cannot be a prophet because she have to bend over and the believers, they cannot pray if there is a nice ass in the front. Actually, this is true. There's a hadith about a gay who was praying in front of the Muslims. And the Muslim, they came to the caliphate and they said to him, uh, <coughs> Read with me carefully. Read with me carefully. I went to Uthman ibn Affan, the caliphate, while he was signed. And I said to him, you are the chief of the Muslims. This is al-Baghdadi now. In general, and you see that what has befallen you. We are led in the Salat by a leader of fitna, trial and affliction, etc. Okay, what does that mean? Read, read, read and love. And we are afraid of being sinful in following him. Uthman said, uh, the prayer is the best of deeds. So when people do good deeds, do same as they do. Then, and avoid those bad deeds. Uh, as Zuhair, he said, huh, in our opinion, one should not offer salat behind an effeminate person unless it is there's no alternative okay but hold on let us analyze this so this imam is a gay and this guy claiming that the muslims are going to go into fitna they are being tempted do you see it a trial and affliction okay you tell me how your muslim will be in trial and affliction by seeing a guy bending in front of you unless you are a gay yourself is that correct? How in the world a man will be tempted 
by seeing a man bending over unless he himself and those who they are around in a bunch of gays. So he is coming to the caliphate saying, the guy in front of us, he seduced us with his ass. May Allah ask you. Well, obviously you are a gay too. It's obvious. The guy he bent over, he said, man, look at this bum. What the heck? So sexy. It's obvious. So when Zachary Naik, he said, the brother entered in Islam, we don't have a woman, he is the prophet. Because it's been over, that would deter the believer. Here we go. Zachary Naik disturbed if there's a nice ass in front of him. Even if it's an ass of a man, not an ass of a woman. This is an ass religion, my friend. Start with ass, end with ass. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. I always make tea and it get cold before I drink it. Here we go. The tea is cold now. What I will do? If I'm a Muslim, I will have four wives. One doing belly dancing, one making tea and coffee, and the other one is doing a shoulder massage. There's one more. What you would do? Let me think of something. Uh, throw rocks at the neighbors. Yeah. What is this? What is this? Stop lying. The guys, his guys, stop, stop, stop lying. The, the imam is not a gay. Okay, do you, do you know how to read? In Arabic, it says Muhannath, you idiot. This is the translation, Muhannath. He's a homo. This is what it says in Arabic. And this is your translation. What a feminine person mean, Abdul? You translate for us. Our English is bad. Christian Prince, stop lying. It doesn't say gay. Hello? Hello? And actually, your God, he promised you to be a, a homo in heaven. Isn't it him who promised you that in heaven, if you wish to have a baby, you will be pregnant and you will deliver it? And until now, I'm trying to find out, you will deliver the baby from where exactly? Huh? Hello? Isn't it Muhammad who said that in heaven there is a, a bazaar, a market, and there is nothing in that bazaar except pictures, images of men and women? Let us see if we can find, here we go. Is that is that me saying that or this is your prophet? In paradise, Indeed, in the paradise, there's a market, brother. No buying nor selling except images of men and women. So whenever a man desire an image, he enter it. All of you in heaven, you will be bisexual. The images of who? Images of men and women. Be my witness. There's a Playboy, big, big market Playboy magazine in the heaven of Allah. And the customers, all of them, they are men. Does you see it? Whenever a man desire an image, but image of who? Who is in the image? Men and women. Where is the Abdul? He says to me, liar, liar. You don't understand. Are you there? Are you there, brother? Hello? And you enter to do what with it, brother? Virtual sexuality? Ibrahim Tatar. Friend the mercy of Allah. It's going to apply us with a lot of Playboy magazine. And the Playboy magazine is full of big that of very beautiful men and beautiful women. And if a man like me, he like an image, he get in it and he boom 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 with it. Boom boom with the image. Image of a man. Hello? 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 What happened to the Muslim? Like they, they are dead. Nobody is even texting. One God, CP? Yes, we have one God. You Muslims, you have many gods. You don't even know your God. 
anyway guys I think we have enough for today this video will be shown again in two or three hours in my page and you can download it and you can share it with your friends and feel free to add your subtitle to it in your own language doesn't matter what your language is Indonesian French English I don't care you know help us to spread the truth and the truth will set you free uh, this is the wisdom of my Lord and there's no wisdom after or better than his wisdom all right so the truth my friend the truth we are not the same as Muhammadan who their God says to them in chapter 5 verse number 101 ask no questions we are not going to accept a religion says ask no questions and verse 102 says why because if you ask those questions you will leave the belief ask not why because the same question people before you ask the same questions and they left Islam do you see it no we ask questions and the Lord he ordered us to read the books search the books is what Jesus said find the truth and the truth will set you free and by the truth of the Lord the Messiah the Christ not by the truth of a Christian Prince you will be all setting free no wisdom no better no no person in this history of mankind can save you can guide you better than the Messiah go and read anything the Messiah he said and go and see this rubbish here in front of you and you tell me what do you see they start singing for you stupid words they are singing this is me lay, 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 but it's stupid the the words it, it is stupid it's disgusting they sing it for you and they bring for you a nice voice to make you believe this is amazing this is so so beautiful this guy who have nice voice whatever he's saying is going to look nice even if he's singing about poo poo even if he's singing about poo poo there's many singers around the world who have nice voices. They are saying the F word and people, they pay a lot of money to get their albums, if we can call it albums. I call it sewage. Get a nice voice, sing stupid things, F word, the B word, and people take it. You have a nice voice. And they repeat it without even knowing what they are saying. This is exactly what Islam is about. So I want to say thank you for everybody. Don't forget to download my videos as soon as they are available and updated. And always remember to subscribe to those who download my videos and share them again in their channel so you can always receive the video which we take off from our channel because we don't keep them. All right? So this video, uh, save the title. Search for it maybe two hours from now or three hours from now. You will find the same video posted in many channels around so you can have them. With this, I want to say thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you and may Christ save us from the evil of this cult and every cult which should bring nothing but disaster and false teaching and misery. And the misery of the world today is because of the misery of us believing in false teaching, believing that money can save us, believing that corrupt people, they can do good, believing that a corrupt, a, a false prophet can be a prophet. This is the problem. ISIS is not the problem. ISIS are victims of Muhammad. ISIS, they believe that they are serving God. And nobody will understand that. This is the problem. Muhammad, he made them believe that they are doing a good job for God. And this is Jesus was speak about. He speak about those people. He said, time will come and people will think by killing you, they are doing favor to God. This is the problem, my friend. This is the problem. The God, which is the devil, they are doing favor to him, thinking they are doing favor to the true God. And we are going to expose that. Thank you, and see you soon again. And this is a Christian prince who was with you. Take care, and good applause.